They're coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome to another thrilling episode of Fact Heist. Today, we'll talk about a terrible and curious brain disorder, the Qatar Syndrome, aka the Walking Corpse Syndrome. The Qatar delusion is a very rare condition, which can result in death if not diagnosed or treated, with only around 200 cases ever reported worldwide. I told you it was rare. She's so drunk. As a delusion, it's a firmly held belief which is contrary to scientific evidence. How could light exist before the sun and stars were created? Or even simple common sense. Probably God had lasers. But which is not shared by other people of the same socio-cultural and educational background. But in this case, it's a delusion of nihilism, because people deny or negate the existence of various things. Yeah, he believes in nothing. He believes in nothing, Lebowski, nothing. For the affected person, the symptoms are a delusional belief that they do not exist, or that they are rotting, putrefying inside, have lost some internal organs, or that they have been stolen, or most of the time they just think they are already dead. They can't kill me. I'm dead already. I'm a walking corpse. Yes, like a zombie. Don't say that. The main thing is a sense of denial, denial of the self, or body parts, internal organs, or even essential aspects of life. The Qatar syndrome was first reported in 1788, by, you've guessed it, Swiss naturalist Charles Bonnet. But almost a century later, in 1880, French neurologist Jules Qatar eventually got dibs on coining the term, because French people like to steal from others. Jules Qatar was then studying the case of Mademoiselle X, which sounds like some old VHS porn to me, but it's not. This hot chick denied the existence of some of her body parts but also any need to eat. A bit like anorexia, but way before it was cool. She thought she was damned or some shit, and couldn't die in shit. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk here. And then she died of starvation. Jules Qatar first named the condition, Le délire des négations, which means the delirium of negation, but in French. <laughs> this syndrome is a somatic delusion, meaning false beliefs about any aspects of the body. According to the DSM-5, it is not a specific standalone disorder, because it is more of a rare symptom of a broader primary disorder. As a psychiatric syndrome of varied severity, and with no clear-cut method to diagnose, it is often indeed, a secondary feature of a larger underlying main disorder like migraines, dementia, Versace, 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 postictal state, and what is it, yes? that's just right after a seizure happened, but also psychosis, like in schizophrenia, with hallucinations and shit, but in less than 1% of the time. Broadly speaking, psychosis is when you lose touch with reality. I'm a one-armed German space explorer. When's your launch date? With impaired rational thinking, psychosis is more likely to help to believe something is true, instead of realizing it's impossible. Man lives in the sky, you can't see him, he controls everything. Cool? Good. As psychotic people aren't thinking rationally, they can't obviously reject the idea that they can be dead. Then thinking that doctors are lying to them. You're faking it. He's faking it. Or just don't understand that something that is supposed to keep them alive, is no longer part of them. Like a zombie. Zed word, don't say it. Why not? Because it's ridiculous. This Qatar thing has also been reported after brain injuries, encephalopathy, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, brain tumors, but 90% of the time it happens in severe depression. I am utterly alone. Side note, apparently, some herpes medication can trigger some Qatar-like symptoms, namely a cyclovir. <laughs> Wait. What? I can take some of those, but only in people with impaired renal functions. There is no difference between men and women in likelihood of development. This disorder happens mainly in people from 25 to 60 and above, with an average of 50 years old. In even rarest cases, Qatar delusion can happen under the age of 25, but it tends to be a secondary feature of bipolar disorder. Apparently, there is three stages for Qatar syndrome. First, there's the germination stage, with psychotic depression level symptoms but also hypochondria, the state in which people lose their shit about their health and illnesses, yes that one. Then there's the blooming stage, with full development of the symptom and delusion of negation. And the delusions can happen in a third stage, the chronic stage, during every occurrences and episodes of chronic psychiatric depression. My whole life is a dark room. According to studies, there can be a pattern for Qatar syndrome. It may start with a vague sense of anxiety for weeks or even years before the first visible onsets then followed by a troubling view of self in which any meaning and sense of purpose becomes lost. For good measure. Followed by the full-blown delusions. I just thought that when I died I'd see a bright light or float above the ground. Turns out death is pretty mundane. I guess sometimes the end 
It's just the end. For the last time, Jerry, you're not dead, okay? Now go back to your room. With a denial or one's life or some shit. Jerry has catards or walking corpse syndrome. The guy thinks he's dead even though he's walking around. I mean the main feature of the syndrome. When the person is convinced to be dead. Fuck all you all We out here big star. We run the hands up. No, I can make it happen. My rapping is similar to motherfuckers when they scrap it. Blast and watch them back. I'm notorious. Big affiliation with death bro. Niggas get their gas bill back. Food is the best coat. Bitch, you Mr. Mina. I'm raising hell like family needs. Mr. McAvely straight out of jail. Southern knees. Intoxicated. We duplicated but never faded. Now that we made it, my adversary just play a hate. Got a Mercedes for the streets. I thought I could think I'd drop top jack For these bitches that's on my dick Go to club in the back I'm smoking bud in the back I'm waiting for niggas to drip Cause bitch I love to scrap Let mama raise me as a thug nigga With a love nigga I'm a millionaire Started as a drug dealer I went from rocks to Z's Writing raps and movies I went from trusting these tricks Now they all wanna sue me So fuck them all As previously stated Because of varying primary disorders Intensity and recurrence The delusions can last for days to years Subsequently, another effect of Qatar syndrome is an absolute isolation from relations and interactions with other primates of your kind. Because being, or at least feeling dead is kind of a bummer, socializing becomes way less important. So people and relatives won't notice anything, giving a feeling of indifference to the sufferer, adding even more stress and anxiety, leading to more isolation in a kind of a nasty positive feedback loop. The afflicted person may also neglect self-care, personal hygiene and physical health. This can lead to some self-destructive pattern, as people stops to eat, no need, and may have increased tendency toward self-mutilation, or even engage in suicidal behavior. Another risk factor for these people with Qatar syndrome, is that they act in ways that suggest their belief of immortality, so they can have reckless behavior. This walking corpse syndrome is a delusional misidentification syndrome, and what is this? a disorder in which there's a belief that people or thing have been changed or altered or some shit, and is neurologically closely related to Capra's delusion, the belief that people have been replaced by imposters. Or genetically altered humans, whatever, fuck you! For more about Capra's syndrome, check our episode, links up there. This relationship with Capra's means that those symptoms most likely originate from weird shit going on in parts of the brain associated with emotional response and facial recognition. And it goes a little something like this. When you look at someone, or even, in this case at yourself, a bunch of different brain areas and networks carefully work in conjunction to one another to process any physical characteristics and features of the person, but also the emotional representation and memories associated with them. Or you, then mixing it all together to reach the point of recognition of that person. With Qatar syndrome, the previously established emotional load construct of the self doesn't match the body image perception. For people with Qatar, when looking in a mirror, they recognize their own face but there is no emotional load connected to it. When they see their face they don't feel any emotional structure of the self to match the face. For them, at that point, there is a failure in familiarity processing. So their brain can misinterpret this disconnection as a fundamental change in reality. Moreover, if some parts of the brain are out of line, or work at a higher or lower rate, people are more likely to also experience a different sense of reality. This delusion is thought to result from neural misfirings between two key parts of the headpiece, the facial fusiform area, and the amygdala. When your brain tries to make sense of the face of someone you know or you love, the visual signals you absorb go to the fusiform gyrus, in the visual cortex, but more accurately in the facial fusiform area, which main job is to recognize faces. Once untangled and decrypted, those datas are associated, connected, thanks to some neural networks, to the amygdala, which associates the emotional load to the recognized face. Disruption of those pathways or networks or any impairment in the absorption of visual information could then result in failure of recognition, in this case, self-recognition. Therefore, people with Qatar syndrome don't meet the emotional response they are supposed to get when they look at their face. As they fail to create or remind the emotional experience associated with their face, they won't feel no emotional structure of the self, hence realizing there's something odd and unfamiliar with themselves, and can start to think they don't exist anymore. Other brain areas can be the seat of lesions or disturbances, which can also play a role in this walking corpse syndrome. Lesions in the parietal lobe and in frontotemporoparietal circuitry. And what is this? Some circuitry which connects the frontal lobes and the temporoparietal junction are associated with a greater occurrence of Qatar syndrome. Footnotes, the temporoparietal junction, when overstimulated, can sometimes be responsible for out-of-body experiences. Studies show that there is also a greater incidence of brain atrophy, or volume loss, especially of the median frontal lobe, in people suffering from this delusion. Furthermore, people with this disorder, when in a PET scan, 
really have brain activity similar to someone in a vegetative state. But Qatar syndrome is not always and only about the deny of the self, a blurred line between life and death or the feeling that you're inside have been corroded by magic beings or external forces. There can be some deviation of the belief, like somatoparaphrenia, when someone denies the ownership of a limb. That shit can even extend to one entire side of the body, even if provided with unfuckwithable proofs that the limb is still attached to the body. Side note, again, Qatar syndrome is about being alive, but feeling dead, not feeling alive, but being already dead. What are they doing? Why do they come here? Some kind of instinct, memory, of what they used to do. This is an important place in their lives. So people afflicted with Qatar delusion shouldn't be confused with those other people upon which you must fire at will. A number of effective treatments are available for Qatar syndrome, it is often treated like psychotic depression, with antidepressants, mood stabilizers or antipsychotics, but sometimes electroconvulsive therapy, yes this electric thing, but with kinda mixed results. Remember that only 200 cases have been reported worldwide, so it is understudied because of its rarity, and all the mechanism of Qatar syndrome are obviously not fully understood yet. So keep in mind that more research is needed. This kind of disorder also gives us an insight on how delicately and carefully the brain is wired together, absorbing informations and piecing it all together to give us a sense of reality, and how a few glitches can cause people to experience a shitload of different realities. And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist. I hope the 20 people who made it that far enjoyed it. I probably know them all. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't make me ask twice. See you next time. Yeah!